Good morning, friends. Welcome to a live recording with Lincoln Design Co. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It looks like we have a, a little bit of a delay on the feed. Hopefully that will uh, that will pass here and we'll, we'll we'll catch up as we get going. So you guys have been working in the office now for how many months? Uh, we've been back, what, a month and a half? Two, three months? Yeah, yeah, two, yeah months. two months maybe. Two, two and a half months. And when you guys were not at the office, you were doing everything remote and, and – Dan, you were going in solo? Uh, Correct. Yep. And how was that time period for you? Were were you guys still able to stay efficient? Like, did you lose a lot of the the companionship and the team mindset of being together? Yeah. I mean, you know, in the beginning when COVID hit, there was a a big pause as far as like even workflow, clients, stuff like that. So there was kind of, you know, a two week break almost where, Everyone was at home. We were still trying to figure out what was going on, how long that was going to last. Um, but no, I mean, it still it still works out. It works out good, you know. But for the most part, being in the office, especially when it's like myself, Dustin, Jordan, and Davey, um, right? It works out. Um, when we're doing design projects, you know, bigger design projects, it helps to have us all in the studio. Got it. Got it. So one of the things that I was curious about for you know your studio in these times is are you seeing any big shifts? Like are, are, are people like, okay, we've just got to get our business back to, to normal. We need to hire like high end design. Like I was very curious about people like you that are sort of that boutique level of design. Would there still be budgets to support the type of work that you guys provide for, for larger companies? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I've seen it go back to, uh, you know, most of our clients and even new clients, um, just kind of pick, pick up the ball and run with it, you know? Yeah. You know, the, in which they have to, if they want to keep, you know, keep moving along. So it's definitely, I wouldn't say it's went back to normal, but, but definitely the budgets are, are there and the projects are, you know, they're working towards 2021, 22. So yeah, for sure. And at the same time though, we're getting a lot of startup companies, um, small, really? mom and pop, yeah, small mom and pop things, uh, people that are at home going, Hey, I've, you know, I've been thinking about this for years. I have a bunch of free time. You know, I want to kick off this, you know, this new business. Can you do, you know, logos and for us or whatever? So I've seen a lot of that, you know, coming through for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it it seems like a crazy time to start a new business, but there's definitely people that are out there making moves. And, you know, uh, when everything shifts, it has to go someplace. So, you know, there's, there's always a new opportunity for somebody and happy to hear that's landing on your shoulder. So let's head over and look at some of the work that you guys have completed. Uh, we're looking at the do tour that, that, that you guys did for Mountain Dew and give people that maybe don't know what do tour is just a quick synopsis of what the do tour actually is. Yeah. So the do tour is, it's an event that Mountain Dew puts on every year. It's been this was the 11th year mm-hmm. um, in a row. And so they basically do a winter event and a summer event, skateboarding, one one uh, summer event, skateboarding, winter, snowboarding, snowboarding, and skiing. So every year they pick a new, it's usually an artist um, that does basically all the design and marketing for it. Yeah. So this year for 2020, they approached us in 2019 as like the studio to do all the work for that, all the marketing. So. So we we're stoked. So it was, it's a big event. It's a ton of pieces. Um, it's something that we started in late 2019 and then, uh, it basically dropped in uh, February of 2020. So when you get hired to do the do tour, do they tell you right out of the gate, like all of the different pieces that you need to make for the entire tour? Or is it as they're booking the tour and they hit new obstacles, they come back to you guys for new art requests? No, no, it's pretty standard every year. They, you know, they know, they know what, yeah, what they needed from the, from the year before. So it was pretty straightforward as far as like, we need, you know, A to Z Mm -hmm. from, you know, from small little business cards all the way up to billboards on the side of the, the highway leading up to the ski resort and shit like that. So. So what we're looking at right now is we're looking at, um, it looks like, a snowboarder going down a, a handrail once again snowboarding always trying to rip off skateboarding good luck you'll never get there uh but what we see behind everybody 
are, it looks like that you guys did a pattern wrap uh, for where they've got the video boards and, and different information for, you know, the leaderboards and sponsors and all that stuff. So is that just a big, massive pattern that you hand over to those guys and then they figure out how to, to, to wrap it around their, their various uh, tour pieces? Or do you guys actually have to skin various different things that they know will be going on the tour? For this, for the most part, New Tour has their own in-house creative. Got it. So they do a lot of the basically the layout for stuff like that because it kind of can move and change depending on the mountain and, and the event and where it's at. So right. A lot of times they really don't know until they get there or the week before as they're building it out exactly the sizes. Your deliverable is just then a crazy ass pattern that they can wrap around whatever obstacle comes their way. Yep. Which Correct. is fun for us because we could show up and see stuff and and see like, oh, wow, look what they did with the pattern. I didn't I didn't necessarily think we could do that. And they put it here. They put it there. It's, you know, it's kind of like a fun surprise. So with a pattern like this, where how repetitive does it have to be? Is Do you guys just give them like a, a big rectangle and then they can wrap it around things? Or does this have to actually be able to like repeat on on all four sides? It, it needs to repeat. Yeah, it's got to be a tile of little pattern that they can just drag out. And, and yeah, it's a it's just a swatch basically, so mm-hmm. they can have their area, click the swatch, and it'll fill it. So it's pretty cool, actually. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's a pretty tech way to do this. So for you guys, um, who in the team is the? Because this is like illustration and marketing, but there's also like a, a bit of a math brain in there to figure out. Okay, half a skull on the left means I need half a skull on the right. Like who's, who's the, the pattern guy that can figure out how to, to hit all the edges so that it loops. Uh, Jordan usually does most of the patterns. Really? I would have not. <laughs> I always love who comes off the bench for whatever goes that way. I would have not guessed it was Jordan. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. When they're super, like we do some patterns for a couple of different companies for hats and, and button ups and things that are fully illustrated. Yep. And, and then like Brandon or Damaso will have to figure that out and, and basically illustrate the pattern to, to be tileable. But for the most part, when it's all vector based like this, we'll hand it off to Jordan and he'll build out the patterns. Yeah. It's definitely like doing a Rubik's cube. You got a little bit of, right. figure out. it's like a fun, you know, equation. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy. So when you look at this though, what, what's fun about this piece that we're looking at right now, and it's amazing that for the first time people that are watching along can see what we're talking about. So we can get even more specific in the, the, the illustrations around us is I love that it's very hard to spot the pattern in this. Like it's, you just don't see the seam, you know, um, effortlessly with the way that this is going around these three different um, display boards. But I also love that there's that sort of uh, mummy or, or mummy rip that's in the top center of, of the main leaderboard. So is that actually in the pattern or did they have to take some of your artwork to put it over there to get that perfect symmetry? So, I mean, you'll see later as we click through these slides, Got it. kind of this, this toolkit that we, that we made for them. So on something like this, they, they would apply that pattern as like a background pattern. Ah. And, then, and then they place that dude right in the center like that. Got it. So you're giving, you're giving talented people really good tools to play with because this looks like they had you lay out the whole thing. So that's great to have a collaboration with do tour where they've got, you know, a, a staff that knows how to really play with the toys that you guys deliver them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, honestly, the, the guy at do tour, who's the creative director, he's, he's an industry veteran that I've known for a long time. He, yeah. he knows what he's, you know, so we, we handed it off to good hands and, and they did a, a lot with it. So right now we are looking at the copper mountain branding. And so do all six of these get used or is this what you guys submitted over to them? This is first round of comps. Okay. So basically the event was at Copper Mountain in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So Copper Mountain had to be kind of the main focus due to our Copper Mountain. Um, so they, we basically, the, the brief was it needs to be fun, Super Bowl type. Right. Something calls out that it's a winter event. Um, so you look at it right away, you know, Hey, this is snow, this is winter in the mountains. Um, so this is some of the first round of comps that we sent over. Wow. So out of these six, roughly for your team, what do you put into the calendar? Dan, is this 
three days worth of work, two weeks worth of work? Like, give us an idea of how, with your team, you put this in the calendar and then get this over for that first round and, and meet that first date for your client. This, I would say, I think this was probably about two days. Two days. Worth of work, yeah. Three guys. Three guys on it, though. Wow. Yeah. I guess that's the the good thing about having the, the larger size team is that you can put more humans on a project and get a crazier deadline met faster. Yeah, exactly. And the style wasn't <clears throat> super defined by do tour is it was very open. So we wanted to kind of hit it from a couple different styles, you know, give right. it to, to a couple different guys to interpret, you know, what they thought it should look like. So that's where you end up getting a lot of these different looks. And with this particular six that we're looking at, the do tour logo is in five of the six it's, prominent in the top row is that sort of a template that that all of you guys were coming to independently or is that something that you guys kind of have an overall lincoln talk about like this is sort of the hierarchy of what we're doing you know damaso you you do uh one in your style uh david you do one dustin you do one and then you guys kind of fit in the same template or is it just independently everybody kind of starts seeing it the same way no they kind of i mean do tour wanted their logo up there it had to be we had to be able to use it with and without the word do tour on it. Right. Some of the comps had it. Some of them didn't got it. It depended on the, on the design. So when you're putting out just what we're looking at right now, the, these six logos, a lot of these have like little pieces where you could see where the idea would go. Like, let's take the, the top left, for example, where you can see the happy little, mountain and clouds and, and sun and stuff. Um, when you submit something like this, you're basically willing to open a portal that they're going to say, okay, we're going with the top left one. And now your job for the next three months is to make a bunch of happy mountains and happy suns and all that stuff. So how, how um, much do you plan what you're willing to show somebody? Because like, let's say they took the one below it where everything is literally like, you know, each type, uh, each letter is essentially an illustration depicting that letter. That one could have got really, really complicated if they would have went with, with that rollout. So I'm so curious, like, do you guys have a long talk about this top right logo opens up a, a portal where now we're making weirdo monsters, Sasquatches and, and, and pointy Christmas trees? Yeah. I mean, it was something that going into this project, we knew there was going to be this basically toolkit or graphics kit yeah. that went along with the logo. And we knew we had to have a bunch of different pieces that they could use, you know, throughout all the different marketing. So going into that, we knew like, okay, some things need to be incorporated mm -hmm. that we can build on as soon as this, you know, type gets approved. Yeah. So you're right. You're right. The bottom left one, if they had, a, if they would have picked that one, I mean, from there we would have needed to then start thinking about, Hey, we got to develop like a little creature, some little characters, mascot right. to, to go with this type um, where the top left, like you said, you can see that already kind of taking shape, you know? Yeah. I just think that's a kind of a interesting thing to, to talk about, especially from industry leaders like you guys, because there's probably a lot of people that are watching or listening that, you know, they're just trying to get the logo approved and you have to watch out because sometimes you can get the wrong logo approved and then all of the deliverables that now have to match that could be like, well, shit, I didn't think about when I just showed them the logo that that illustration in the corner, I don't have ownership of that or that's not really my comfort zone or my style or I, I killed myself working on this illustration for like, you know, nine of the 10 days I had to work on this. Now, if I owe them 50 more illustrations in that style, I'm going to be up shit's Creek. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to plan ahead. That's where we're fortunate, you, you know, to have the team to, right. you know, I'm confident that any of these they would have picked, we would have been able to execute on, on a huge graphics kit, you know, based on any of this stuff. So we can kind of go at it a little bit different, you know, sure. I mean, that we're going to be able to get it done in the end. And you guys also have, established styles, established comfort zones. Like I, I don't even think at this moment, Dan, you would have to tell anybody like, Hey, uh, David, you're kind of overextending yourself on this illustration style. Like I, I, I kind of feel like once you guys do something like what you did for the, the WWE, you guys are now on a roll where you kind of really know what styles are. Well, maybe that's something that we do for a one-off skateboard 
where it's more of a vanity project than a than a big marketing rollout um, because it, it's been fun to see that style evolve. So now we move over to uh, another set of, of six branding pieces here. And is this a second round or are we seeing... Are we seeing an improve? I think I'm seeing some familiar pieces from the last round over here. Yeah, you are. This is round two. Okay. So basically they came back to us. They had picked out a couple and wanted to expand on that. Um, they were very worried about it reading, you know, right away, copper, copper mountain. Right. So that's where, you know, the two, the whole left column there, that's where they struggled with, Hey, this is pretty hard to read. You know, how are we going to make this legible? Mm -hmm. Um, and as you see, you know, uh, to the right, they get a little, little easier to read. You end up on the bottom right, and that one's the easiest. Mm -hmm. So that that was definitely something we were battling with, you know, like how how fun is this, and you know how legible is it in the end? Yeah, I, it, it is. It's funny to watch this transition of art and information cross paths, right? Because when we, I'm going to go back to the, the the first slide real quick. At this moment, we're just kind of working out ideas. And so these are fun, but man, oh man, when you get over to the second round, the information hierarchy is so much more established. Like these are so much more legible. There's such a more of a focus on Copper Mountain versus some of the the fun things happen around it. Like what a what a huge transformation in that round of work. And I guess that really starts to show now we have the client speaking to us, sort of guiding us more in a direction that, that, that they feel safe investing in and going in. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's fun. So with when you get into this zone, now let's kind of backtrack a little bit. How many of the three guys are working in this spot? Do do the one or two folks that got picked sort of out of the first round, do, do they stay with this and everybody else goes into other projects, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, the, the ones on the left, the Maso did mm -hmm. and uh, Davey did the top right. And then Brandon did the other two. So it basically, you know, kind of goes down to those three now making changes and, and edits to, to what they did. So awesome. then that's when Dustin and, and Jordan kind of move on to a different project. I, I really like that. That bottom right one is just so sturdy. And I guess it comes from being a, a lifelong skateboarder that I'm always drawn to graphics that look like they could either be a sticker, be a t-shirt or be that rad little logo on the top of the board where you have to debate, ah, do I run grip from the nose to the tail or do I leave this centerpiece cut out? Cause I like this graphic. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you'll see that they gravitated towards one because of that. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, this is such a fun project to watch mature and, and, and come together because now we're seeing, so out of the gate, it was just fun exploration. Yep. Then we saw a shift over to getting the, the branding, you know, Copper Mountain to make sure that's very, very legible. And now in round three, we're in a much more friendly balance of art and illustration with messaging, right? Like these over these two tripe, type treatments over on the left have a perfect balance compared to the first two rounds, which were leaning one way too hard to art, then the next way too hard to just, you know, the messaging. I really like how it's starting to come together here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see that, you know, they went with this type and you can see why it's, it's very legible that you, they could see the little monsters and the little pieces that were, you know, we we're going to be able to pull out and build off of. So at this point we're kind of the, the type is about, 80 80 percent there mm -hmm. and they want to see okay how, how is this going to look what, what are the color comps going to look like on this show us some different color palettes let's see if this is really going to work a question that uh has come up over in the the, the live audience is they want to know when you work with mountain dew and everybody knows mountain dew's core color is is green do they tell you ahead of time like yo we need to make sure that we keep this relatable to the product or to the family or they kind of just let you guys run wild and they know that eventually there'll be all the traditional due to our logos and, and mountain dew branding wrapped around everything yeah originally it was kind of go wild do do what you want with it there wasn't a lot of restrictions um with the due to our logo we could mm -hmm. definitely change the color but then you'll see as it gets to the end they always fall back to hey it looks great but you know use the corporate logo 
I always love how far of a journey we go to end up not too far away from where we started. Exactly. So with this little take alone illustration we have over here, I see that character is being used as the A in mountain. And I also see a very similar pair of hands uh, working with the U and the O. Is this you guys starting to say, okay, this is our, our core product that we have. Like this is the core branding. Um, but this is where we're starting to develop like the takeaway characters and the sort of the, the side branding, if you will, you know, so that there's a, a mascot that can then be put into, you know, swag merchandising and, and, and various other things that they need to produce. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is where we're pulling out those things and showing them, Hey, you know, we can build off of the little character, you know, that, that is used in the type and yeah, he could be doing all kinds of different stuff from DJing to, you know, in the logo to be a standalone mascot. I think there is even a guy running around in a Yeti outfit there at the event. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that is so amazing. Uh, with these color swatches that you guys are showing them, do they tell you how many colors that they need to keep their branding into? I mean, I don't feel like with an organization like this, is, is anything being done with spot colors or is everything just like full CMYK printing? For the most part, it was all CMYK. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I mean, we knew we were going to do posters, um, screen printed posters and stuff and, and some apparel. So oh, okay. At some point, it, you know, we needed uh, spot colors, but but here, like, we're just running all, you know, CMYK. And yeah, and this is, we, we showed, there was three other color uh, uh, choices of color comps as well. There was like six total that we presented. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I love, and, and a lot of people over in the, the live feed are noticing too the the fact that you guys not only show them the swatches but then take the character and have the little monster lurking over the swatches that's a real pros move of not only kind of giving them something they didn't ask for which is always nice customer service move but also in the idea of really showing them like hey this is how scalable this branding that we're presenting to you is yeah yeah exactly and I don't know that I showed the pages in here from the actual uh, style guide. Mm -hmm. In the style guide, we we basically build out pages, and there'll be like a color page, and and on that page, you know, you kind of gotta you gotta make it look cool. You gotta add, add a little something to it. So it's things like this, you know, instead of just doing you know circle color swatches or whatever, if you can add something to it, you know, with the little guy, it, it just comes across better, sells it more. They've picked the one that they liked. We're starting to commit to it. And this is you guys basically just rolling out like, okay, so if you're going with this logo, these are all the pieces we have to offer you. Yep. Correct. And there's, there's a vibe with the whole uh, do tour and, and it's basically music, music and action sports. So mm -hmm. that's where you get the speakers and the turntables and you get the little Yeti dude with the mic. Yeah. So for ba so basically what we're looking at is the Yeti dude's been approved. We have our logo approved. And so now you're basically making all the complimentary uh, branding pieces. So going back to the very beginning, when we saw the guy doing uh, the, the handrail, we now see where that Yeti eye like zombie rip came from. So they were able to take the pattern you guys created, wrap all of their, their um, uh, equipment that holds up the monitors and the, the lighting and, and all the different power rigs. All that metal is wrapped with the pattern. And then to make it look real good, their designing department takes these secondary items and centers them where it can to add that crucial uh, layering so things look symmetric and things look pleasing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and like we said, I mean, handing this over to, to a crew who knows what they're doing you know, they're like, oh, perfect. We got a ton of ton of different assets here that we can use. Yeah, it, it looks really, really cool. So for this stuff, do they do they give you guys a line listing of these are the pieces that we need? Or do you guys just kind of start going into the idea of what is due, what is what is due to or what does it represent? What are the pieces that we think that they'll need? Yeah, we just kind of dive in and, and go for it. We showed a, some other sketches as well, uh, um, different poses and things like that, and we narrowed it down to this. Got it. Yeah, uh, the hand with the can would maybe be the only thing they uh, specifically requested. Yeah. Oh, the hand with the can, of course. <laughs> the can's how the can's what got us in this mess, right? Exactly. Yeah, and we had <laughs> one, one hand crushing the can, and that was a no-no. Yeah, so. it was like you know squeezing it all gnarly. Oh, see, it, isn't it fascinating 
the things that we would just think of and they're like, oh, actually, uh, we, we don't like the can ever damaged. That's kind of one, like we don't want to see a monster ripping out of the can. I always love where they have their own internal like threshold of like, yeah, we're down for some crazy stuff, but that's a step too crazy for us. Yep. Yep. All right. So now as we move on, completed work, are we in the final, final, final here? Yep. Yeah. So this is all completed work. So, so this is where, you know, we had to incorporate the do tour logo up top. We mm-hmm. had version that was at the bottom. Um, some that just had the D with Mountain Dew instead of the type as well. So there was a whole, like I said, a whole style guide that had the different uses of the, the logo and how you could use it. Even showing the Copper Mountain type, you know, long or stacked yeah. to give them different versions. It, it looks good. It's just insane. What a wild journey we took to get to this, right? Like so many different steps in that middle chapter to get to something that kind of feels where we were at in round one. Yep. Yeah. Which is good. You know, they didn't veer too far from the first set of comps. Right. So it definitely, I mean, we, we were close on that first round. Yeah. Yeah. Just in, in what I think is important about those other rounds is not only do you find, and this has been my experience, not only do you find some, th- uh, some pieces that, inform the overall project like that's where you know the the yeti guy really sort of materialized so you create some pieces that make it better but you also go through some exercises that take it too far away right it is truly a refining process to get to what feels balanced and perfect and in order to do that you got to do some things that work and some things that don't yep a lot of back and forth with the client you know right so from when we first put this in the calendar the first day that, that everybody was working on this to this moment right here, Dan, what does that window of time look like? How long is that? This is probably four weeks, three to four weeks. I, I think it was around four weeks that we got to this point. It's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually like, it's usually like a week and a half or so for the first comps. And then we'll usually turn around changes that next week again uh, a week after yeah yeah it's almost how fast they can get back to you with changes yeah well yeah that's the big part right like sometimes it's a lot of hurry up and wait right like you meet deadlines and then it takes forever because they're busy to get back to you uh people are pretty impressed at how quick that turnaround is over in the live chat so in this moment we now see uh our vowels some of our vowels have the mountain dew green in it but did they also request that you guys use the Mountain Dew red? Because I can see that that's the color that we're using for the snowboard and the top of the skis. Or is that you guys just sort of getting in there and making everything fit? No, that, that was a request when we kind of picked the final color palette was uh, was let's go heavy on the on the green. Mm-hmm. Can, you know, a little splash of red here and there and do that as well. It's awesome. I, I, I It's really, really good work. It's very illustrative. It, it, it's very easy to read. It has fun takeaway characters. Anybody can see where, you know, if this was handed over to you, if you're in house at do tour that you've now got these fun pieces to work with. So now we come over to the stacked version, which I have to say, I think I'm a, I think I'm a big fan of the stacked version. I like this a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely better. Yeah. Reads better. You get the, the nice hierarchy. And that was, that was, kind of the first comp when we started to finalize it was the stack version. Mm-hmm. And then it was, okay, we need to, we definitely have to have a version that, that is horizontal. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Even seeing it on the light ground on the right to me is stronger, better. You get that black to pop where the left one, we had to put a, you know, a big stroke around the whole thing. Right. Just so all the black doesn't fall out. So yeah. Usually you got to give it to them on both light and dark, but on this one, the light is better to me. Yeah. I I, I, it looks so, so good on both of them. I mean, I know that, that that stroke process, it's, oh, if it was only as easy as just putting it on there, right? Like there's a little bit of massaging that you have to do on all of your artwork to get it just perfectly. Uh, but yeah, it does. It looks so good stacked. And I think one of the reasons why it looks stacked is it feels more mountainish, right? Like the other one feels more like landscape, like you're, you know, seeing everything off from a distance. But this one feels big, like you're standing up in front of it. Like I, I always sort of love that emotional take on these. So you have to give them both the long hor- horizontal one 
and you have to give them the stacked, and they use both of these wherever it fits in, in their operation, correct? Correct, yeah. So with this particular logo, um, you guys had to move over and create the the pattern, which is kind of where our conversation started at today. And this pattern is, and all of these pieces, man, like this is, <laughs> this is really, really fun artwork. Is this one of you or is this a couple of you when it gets to this specific of a look? Um, I think Jordan did these, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jordan handled yeah. these. I think I kicked in a couple ideas that mm-hmm. did or didn't get picked. I'm not even, I don't remember, but mm-hmm. yep. yeah, I think the next yep. ones, Dustin did a couple, I think on the next page. And a lot of times we'll show these patterns, like we'll present them where it's not tileable yet. It's mm-hmm. not in the, in the swatch. Um, because putting it together in the swatch takes a while to get everything to line up and everything. And, right. And all that. So we'll present it where it's not tileable. It'll, it's close and it looks like it can be. Um, and then if they approve it, then it's almost like, okay, Jordan, figure out how this thing's going to tile. Yeah, just like kind of how that preview program just did. It just slows your shit down. So, <laughs> so especially yeah. with with heavy illustrations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the challenge. It's like if you need to turn in a couple patterns that day, if you're designing in the swatch, I mean, it's going to be tough just because the program is going to be spinning. Well, and yeah, and and essentially what you guys are doing is you're letting them shop, and then once they decide on something, then you put in the hard work because the the beauty of letting them shop and pick it is let's say you show them four things. There's no reason for you guys to go through that grueling process three additional times that you don't need to, that maybe you can't even bill back to the client. So I love the idea of getting it close, letting them say, this is the one that we like. Cause with uh silk screening, I used to always do the job where I'm like, okay, this is all of your type everywhere. Is everything spelled correctly? And do you like the size of the headlining band and the support act and the venue and the city that you're playing in? Because once I convert all this type over to pass and start putting distress in there and like basically illustrating over the top of it, the 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 chance to make a revision goes from one minute to one hour. So I really, really do need to know, are we good with what we're looking at? Because we're getting ready to go into one of those moments in the project where a little suggestion is a lot of effort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Jordan, Jordan's on here. We're talk, keep talking about Jordan. He's on here. Uh, chiming in. Yep. You said you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> I was, saw that over there. I'm like, that would be yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Jordan. Good to see you, buddy. Kind of virtually. All right. So here we are. Now we're actually seeing the, this artwork, right? We create all this artwork in a vacuum. We have all this, these amazing pieces that we make, and now we have to see it actually live around other items. So explain yeah. to me what we're looking at right now. So these were a couple of the web pages when they launched, um, they kind of launched the event website and, and everything. So this is them taking basically our toolkit and putting it to use, putting it in the real world. Yeah. So, that, you know, there's a point where where this website launched and we log on and like, oh, shit, look at what they did with, you know, this or that. Or in some cases, you know, look at the stroke they put on this. It's huge. Like, oh, we would have done this different or, or whatever. But yeah, this is this is kind of showing you what they did with with a lot of the assets for the website. Yeah, it, it's always funny, you know, in our controlled environment, even when we make mock ups of websites because we're doing it in Illustrator and not doing it through a web browser. We can finite and get everything where we want to. And then once it goes over into the clients, like say Squarespace, which is horrible on adding just massive borders and buffers and padding around everything, then you're like, oh, so that's what it looks like on the internet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Stuff doesn't line up and yeah. So do you guys have added in your system to go back through and do a once over and sort of fix what you can to, to make it fit the, the real world usage? Or is that just the moment you go, it's in God's hands. We had this beautiful little baby, but now it has to go out and live into the world on its own. It's in God's hands. Yeah, pretty much. God hands. Fingers (laughs) crossed. And yeah, you don't know until you see it. 
So now we're getting to see some real, this is the fun stuff, right? Like the website's always kind of like, oh God, don't let the internet break my baby too much. But what we're looking at right now, like this is, this is the fun stuff, right? Like when we really see it get applied out in the real world and, and, and really get used in these different ways, like print ads, you know, banners that are all around the, the, the obstacle courses that the, the performers are going to be uh, competing on, like this to me is when it starts to feel really real and really fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we knew, we knew going into this project that they wanted us to come out to the event, to the winter and summer event and, and basically do live screen printing, um, be out there at the event to talk about the graphics and, and everything. So, so we knew that at some point we were going to end up out there and see exactly what was done. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of exciting to know that like, okay, you know, we'll be there. We'll have our own booth. We'll be able to see, you know, how it all comes together. So some of this is some of the next pages are like some of the stuff that we saw, took photos of. Yeah. That was probably the coolest part is driving up and just yeah. seeing the big banner across the road. And yeah, like, oh, wow, there it is. That's uh, that's massive. Like, yeah. Awesome. That's the um, illustrator's version of being a musician or being an actor. When you go to the, the city square and you go, look, there's my billboard for my movie or for my, my new album, right? Like that's our version of being like, holy smoke, something I made is wrapped around Times Square, New York City. Like that's that's how we get that moment. And, you know, all of us coming from an extreme sports background, when you see your artwork wrapped around a half pipe or a freestyle course, or that's the banner that all the fans are standing on the other side of, like that's that's what got us into this right like that magic trick of like you mean somebody gets to make that for a living and that somebody could be me one day yeah yeah exactly all right so now we're in the partner guidebook do you guys design this guidebook and it essentially shows everybody like hey here's how the logo we design works and this is what our expectations are of what you should do with it yeah so we help out with this and and basically this was what went out to all the basically any anyone who's going to sponsor the event any of the riders that were going to be in the event it had pages of what to do on the day you show up you know where the different locations are to get your batch <clears throat> just kind of everything so tell me about this big sticker look that we have where we have our white stroke around the things that that need it so we can see that important outer um you know silhouette stroke to let us know that we're looking at the bottom of the the snow melting but then we did this big black fill on the inside. And I, this is something I've been doing more and more when I make thumbnail videos for YouTube is like sometimes just making that Photoshop layer and just filling everything in, making it more of a sticker just makes it so much more legible on a complicated background or on top of concept art. So this sort of sticker look, what, you guys do this just to sort of mask it out so that it's real legible? Or is this something that you actually present over to them like this is something that should be used this way? So this was actually, they did a lot of the sticker look as far as adding the, the big black background and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, in the end, it, it made it, there was going to be, it was going to be used in so many different areas that it made it a little bit easier as far as just, just placing things. Sure. Kind of, you know, design and go type thing. Cause the sticker literally mask out whatever background you put this on now it's going to be legible, you know, versus, you know, people always wonder like, why is yellow used so much for, um, closed captioning? Well, yellow is the only color that will pretty much be legible over any background, but it's so damn ugly that nobody wants yellow type over the top of their beautiful movie that they, you know, worked over color correcting each and every shot and every character just to have yellow type thrown across the front of it. But the sticker look, I mean, it, it, works for a reason because you can just literally stick it on anything and then it's good to roll. Yeah. And the little characters and everything lend itself, you know, to that whole skateboard sticker look and everything. So we're fortunate enough that with this particular project, that that look only makes it feel more legitimate and doesn't weaken it or lessen it in, in any way. So now we're looking at, I'm going to assume these are our silkscreen posters that, that were done live at the event. Correct. Yeah. These were two posters we designed that were going to be screen printed live by Mama Sauce. We had a booth. Um, they had a kind of like a whole. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say Mama Sauce? Yep. Mama Sauce. Yep. He is a Walt Disney World fan. Their name is not welcomed on any of my content. We did an amazing interview, Nick and I, and then he left. He did a mic drop. He's like, by the way, Walt Disney World forever. And I'm like, those are fighting words. There's nobody I hate more than that guy from Mama Sauce. At Walt uh, Disney World, it's a pile of trash. You heard it here first, folks. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah. Those are the guys out there in Florida. So what we, what we did was um, when talking to do tour, we kind of, we kicked around ideas as far as what to do as in like a on snow or at the event kind of marketing. Like what was that going to look like? Yeah. When you were a booth. So we pitched this idea of live screen printing posters mm-hmm. at, at the event in the snow. Um, we did it live at a uh, designer con mm-hmm. with Mama Floss. Tim flew out from Florida. We did it there, which worked out really good. Um, but, but he flew out and then flew out his press, flew out his, yeah. you know, insane. Flew out. That's, that's gnarly. Yeah. Flew it all out to LA for designer con and it worked out great. So when, when pitching this, the idea was like, Hey, you know, we got, we got these guys, this great company, Mama Sauce. Let's fly them out to Colorado. We'll do some live screen printing, you know, in the snow, in our booth um, and all that. So, you know, do tours like do it. Yeah, let's do it. We'll pay for them to come out. Talk to Nick and Tim. They were down. So the idea was that these were going to be the two screen printed posters. Yeah. Um, we show up in Colorado and it's just like this epic snowstorm. It, uh, the it's first a, day. It's <laughs> blizzard in like a couple of years. Yeah. In wow. Denver. Which is what? A, how many thousand? Ten thousand feet above sea level, or some shit. Wow! Yeah. And yeah. then, and then Breck is another five thousand. So, yeah. yeah. So we get in there. We, you know, you got to drive from Denver up to Copper Mountain, and it, it's just snowing like crazy. Next day, they get two feet of snow. They cancel the event for the day because there's too much snow. The, the half pipe, everything was just swamped in snow. Well, at the same time, Nick flies or uh, Tim flies into town. He's never he grew grew up in Florida. He's never been in the snow or even seen the snow. <laughs> uh, so he's like, "What the hell is this?" And we're like, "Yeah, this is a you know." He's like, "Is this normal?" It's like, "No, nah, this is a shit ton of snow." Yeah. So you know, Mama Sauce are such great partners to have for this because they're as professional at printing as you guys are at design. So you know that you can roll this part over to them. You can vouch for them. You can tell do tour like, Hey, this is what they cost. They're worth it. Uh, but what I'm seeing here as a silk screener is these are two posters that are very, very designed for live printing. And I'll explain to everybody why these two designs, two different techniques, but really, really equipped for live printing on the left. We have heavy black. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay down this blue We're going to lay down this green, and then when we put that heavy, big, fat, black booty layer over the top of it, it's going to trap everything that we need. So if we're printing and our paper's shrinking and we're at you know a crazy elevation or there's moisture in there because of snow, we've got enough grip to catch everything. But now, going the opposite of the print on the left, we're doing a secondary print where it throws all those rules out the window because... We're going to lay down this green layer. We're going to throw down uh, this blue layer. And they have to align a little bit. But then when we hit it with that red, everything that goes on beneath it just interacts with it. We're going to do a transparent red. So literally, these are two strong souvenir designs. But these designs are like the easiest things that you could ever print while people are asking you questions while you're out of your comfort zone, and most importantly, while you have all of this moisture in the air messing with your registration and these pieces of paper. So masterfully done on both sides on making two completely different designs, but using both tricks in the screen printing book to to make sure that you don't uh, say, hey, we can print this, and then you make something that's so complicated that you fail at the live event or it takes you forever or they look like shit. So this is really stacking yourself up for an easy victory. Yeah. Yeah. And Tim, uh, Tim did a ton of research as far as printing in cold weather. Yeah. It was 15, 15 degrees, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cold. So he had, before he even came out, he did it. He talked to a bunch of different people and was kind of like, you know, Hey, can this, is this going to work? Da, da, right. Da. So the idea was he was going to come and he at least have one of the colors printed. There you go. Uh, and then show up and do the other two colors. There you, know, you go. Right? So, yeah, he even talked about making special ink to get it to dry in the 15 degree weather. <laughs> yeah. That's why yeah. they're so good as a partner because they're crazy enough to literally figure that out. Exactly. They're not yeah. going to wing it. But the bummer part is the they fly in the press, all the ink and all that shit. Um, Nick drives up or uh, Tim up to the event. And then that next morning, everything was supposed to be delivered to Copper Mountain. 
Well, the it basically got stuck in the snowstorm and never made it. So we never, <laughs> we never screen printed. There was never a press. They closed down the the highway from Denver to the to the Rocky Mountains. Oh because man, it was so heavy. So no, so nothing could get there. So it was a super bummer. It was like shit. So this did happen. This did happen in 2020, right? It did. It was the start of 2020. Oh, so story yeah. makes sense then. <laughs> it off real good. Yeah. Yep. And we were driving up the mountain to go to the event in the van going sideways on the freeway, like drifting. <laughs> hey, and I was scared. Dustin, little did you know then that that was going to be one of the happier moments of your 2020. <laughs> of 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ex- explain this to me real quick. Um, these were going to just be free giveaways, correct? Correct. Yeah. But you guys, part of your partnership with Do Tours, you guys were actually going to have a tent at the event. Was that going to be a merchandise booth for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. It was going to be a merch booth for us. One half screen printing, the other half, basically merch. Awesome. Product and stuff. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Now we, we come up, we see more examples of the artwork being used IRL in the wild and, you know, just all of our backgrounds of, of loving, you know, this version of sports. It's just so cool to see this, these, um, uh, handrail walls here. Sorry, I'm a skateboarder. I don't know all the snowboarding terms. I just know everything was stolen from us. Uh, <laughs> we see these handrail walls that just has the monotone pattern on it. And then the little, you know, ripper monster hand with a uncrushed do can like guys, this is just, this is everything that you ever hope could happen with your tour or with your career. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool when we got there to see it. Cause they went, they weren't pretty nuts as far as it, it was everywhere. I mean, everything was massive too. You know, everything yeah. looks small here. Everything was two to three stories, huge wraps. It was, it was next level. Well, essentially this branding is adding in the magic of the event so that when people show up, they don't feel like they're at a typical day on the slopes. Like they're essentially coming in and creating a carnival or dare I say amusement park style atmosphere where this branding, adding in these characters, like it adds a level of magic and pedigree that this is a very, very special day at, at, at Copper Mountain, one that you'll remember forever. So the branding does a lot of heavy lifting on creating an instant nostalgia of the time that you went there and it looked this way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, it looks professional. And then we did, um, every rider had basically the the jersey and then like on the back, I think of the jersey was the, you know, the the hand on there with their number and the whole deal. So with the little guy, you know, looking over. So, oh, that's awesome. Let me see the other side of it again. It lended itself well, you know, to the pattern on the bottom, to the jerseys and, and everything. So that's cool. So every every um, athlete is wearing that while they're performing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then when there was skull candy. Um, headphones that were made and then like the, the actual passes, VIP passes. Wow. So it's not only living in the landscape, but it's living on all the, the, the staff and the, and the performers. That's really, really cool. That's so much layering. I love that. Yeah. They went in, everything was done up. Even the, like the, the VIP area for the athletes in the back was, everything was just, you know, done up to the next level. Isn't that what you hope though, when you work with a client that they will take your artwork and, and really use it everywhere? Because I think all of us have done stuff like this before. And then you get to the event and there's stuff that you didn't design. And you're like, okay, so where did this come from? Like, where did this stuff pop up at? So to see them really dedicate themselves to using the, the icons and the artwork that you guys made, that's always a huge sigh of relief when you get there. Yo, that one color hoodie looks so good. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, it was more of a partnership uh, per se than like, Hey, this, you know, just right. a client relationship. Cause you know, in the end they, they were down, you know, to put our, basically our logo and, you know, next to theirs on all the apparel and everything. And kind of like, you know, this is due to our artist series, Lincoln design. So, so it was cool. It was definitely a partnership where, you know, we were, we were included in, in the whole deal. So yeah, that tag looks so good. I mean, not for nothing, but the Lincoln logo looks better, but seeing the two of them side by side, that looks good. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. And that was, that was sewn on every, you know, hoodie, long sleeve, beanies, hats, everything. So, Oh my Lord, you weren't joking. <laughs> and I used to live in Buffalo, New York. That's a lot of snow. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we came out the one day and we tried to get into our booth and it was just covered in snow and the roof was caving in. Yeah, it was. It became an issue. Yeah. <laughs> we were leaving the event and Dan was uh, chirping some 360s in the parking lot. We ended up getting stuck for an hour or two in the snow bank. And yeah, we kind of buried the rental car. Wow. Uh, good times. <laughs> Very memorable. <laughs> so uh, real quick, when when they do that, co-branding with you on that tag and they give you that that retail space yeah don't you feel like that is happening because of the effort that you guys have put into branding lincoln independently that it's somewhere you know i mean we all know that it's a boutique design agency but then there's the whole lincoln shop aspect of it where you've made so many different products like i would assume that they think hiring these guys also gives us a quality vendor and a quality partner that they know putting the do logo next to your logo, it it strengthens the street credibility of the do logo. Like they have to perceive your shop as something that strengthens the relationship and why they want to have you out on the footprint of their events. Yeah. I mean, I, I would hope so. Yeah. yeah. You would, uh, you would think. Yeah. I mean, I think they knew, you know, that we were going to come, you know, with our own shop, our own merch. And we've, you know, we've obviously done it for ourselves a million times. So they're very confident that we could produce merch for them as well. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, it was a great partnership. So let's talk about this special weekend in May, which was going to be one of the greatest weekends of my 2020, where you guys were going to be in town. My friend Edmonston was going to be in town. Like this particular weekend in May was going to be sick. And Dan, I remember texting you that weekend being like, this should have been an yeah. amazing weekend. <laughs> we had big plans. Yeah, totally. You're like, this would have been it. I'm like, oh, no shit. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. It was supposed to be the summer event it was supposed to be May 2020. Yeah. Uh, in Long Beach. And then obviously, you know, that got canceled. So, so yeah, big, big bummer on that. How far did you guys get on the branding for Long Beach? Obviously, we see this logo here, but this is is this final and approved artwork and you were getting ready to make assets? Like, how far did this thing make it through the the uh, process before the plug got pulled? Uh, we were done. It's, it's actually the summer branding and the whole kit is done. Like, <laughs> I, can't really, I can't show any, any of it. Yeah, of course. For, except for the logo that they that they released yeah. um, when they moved the move the event but yeah it's it's complete they have every, everything and yeah they're they're ready to roll and that will get slid over to 21 yep yep so we'll be down down along fingers the crossed yeah. yeah fingers crossed yeah who, who knows um but yeah plan is to be down in long beach you know may 2021 we'll do a podcast with you mark set something up and absolutely it'll be a good time absolutely well let me get our next project set up here but for the the do tour um overall great experience for you guys and, and, a, and a happy client at the end yeah yeah super super good experience yep you know like i said the whole snow at the event was it was a huge bummer because we would have sold a lot more mer merch they would have sold a lot more merch you know it just put the brakes on on everything on the mountain sure you know, for, the, for those couple days it, it did let up and the event went on but i mean there was you know, obviously a lot of stuff didn't happen that should have. So that's where we were super pumped for Long Beach. You know, it's like, okay, that didn't work out. Let's get Mama Sauce back out. We know it's going to be nice weather. Um, and then sure shit, you know, COVID hit. So yeah, if we get canceled because of heavy snow in Long Beach, then we've got some serious, <laughs> serious problems going on in the world. Thank you so much for watching today's video over on YouTube. I hope that you learned something. If you did learn something from today's video, from breaking down this amazing design work from Lincoln Design Co., let us know in the comments below. What was the big takeaway from here? What was the big lesson that you learned? And by doing that, you will inform us on how we can make the next video even better. And speaking of next video, part two of this amazing conversation will be released as a video next Tuesday here on our YouTube channel. So you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe. You're going to make sure that you ring that bell so that you don't miss any of the videos we put up and really, really would appreciate right now. It doesn't cost you a nickel to give this video a thumbs up and it doesn't cost you anything other than a minute of your time to write a comment. And I don't know if you know this, but both of those things would make this video get seen by more and more people, which in turn will allow me to make 
more and more videos. The circle of life begins and ends with you, my friend. Like, subscribe, and comment. Three easy steps to make sure this type of content keeps going and going and going. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Can't wait to see you here again soon.